good morning and uh, welcome everyone it's uh, good to be back to study god's word let's pray and we'll get into uh, a study of the book of acts let's pray together heavenly father we thank you lord for your uh, grace we thank you for enabling us to um, follow through the book of acts lord and uh, father uh, we thank you for um, the experiences lord of uh, men and women that you have recorded for us and lord um, especially lord regarding the impact that they've had on cities lord as we study about them impacting uh, different kinds of cities and different kinds of communities and people groups help us lord to also be a uh, uh, a people who are um, missional lord who are a willing to step out who are able to willing lord uh, willing to uh, take the gospel out lord to whoever has not heard it and thank you father that um, as we as we determine to do that lord you will bring opportunities our way so father we we thank you we bless you we honor you in jesus name we pray amen so uh, till now we we looked at the life of apostle paul in his second missionary journey from ad 5 uh, ad 49 to ad 52 and we saw how he uh, started to travel through the regions of macedonia and uh, finally in the last last session we we had come up to corinth and we saw there that he ministered in corinth both to the jews and the gentiles uh, yet there was some kind of opposition that he experienced and the opposition was so uh, challenging for him that god himself encouraged him he got a word from god saying there are many people in that city who are of god and that he should continue the work that he should not stop speaking the word of god that's where we had stopped right so we'll continue from there uh, i think we stop somewhere around verse 11 where god encouraged him ha huh. so when god encouraged him in the midst of the uh, challenge he stayed it says there for a year and 6 months so which is the place where he spent most of his time in the second missionary journey corinth corinth is where he spent most of his time uh, and um, you know he served the lord there so let's read on and uh, let's see what happens now uh when we talk about corinth what kind of a city was it sin city yeah that's what explains corinth the best okay so now uh paul is being like he has to face the leadership of corinth and let let's see what happens so he comes before a uh, gallio a proconsul of that region of achaia Uh, and uh, they bring him to the judgment seat and they are now trying to question him okay so there is an accusation against paul in verse 13 we can see uh, they say this fellow persuades men to worship god contrary to the law so everywhere they just come up with any accusation but did paul really do anything contrary to the law no he didn't right Yes, no, huh? Okay, for the for the <laughs> for the people, it it is it feels like he's going contrary to the law, but actually he's doing what is right by God. But everywhere he's getting stuck like this. They are judging him for doing something wrong. So when he is um, before Gallio, God gives him wisdom. Okay so let's just read from verse 14 to verse 17 And when Paul was about to open his mouth Galileo said to the Jews if it were a matter of wrongdoing or wrongdoing or wicked crimes O Jews there would be reason why I should wear with you but if it is a question of words and names and your own law look to it yourselves for i do not want to be a judge of such matters and he drop them from the judgment seat then all the greeks took sosthenes the ruler of the synagogue 
and beat him before the judgment seat but galileo took no notice of these things okay so um, actually the wisdom was given to galileo the proconsul uh, it is very similar to what happened earlier if you go back gamaliel you remember at the time when uh, the apostles were standing before gamaliel he also said if it is a work of god we cannot stop it but if it is a work of men then it will stop so these are unbelieving leaders and god by his spirit is working through them also so sometimes such things can happen where the wisdom of god is in the mouth of galileo he says no i can't look i cannot find out any wrong doing uh, against the law of the land but maybe you know you have some issues with with the uh, law for the jews so that's your your matter i can't comment on that if it's about the law of the land you come here otherwise i'm not going to get into this so he distances himself from judging paul and um, they all get angry they all get upset okay that uh, uh, this this person is being set free so this was the issue god gave some freedom to paul uh, in the midst of this tough situation so sometimes god does this right like favor comes on us and uh, instead of paul having to fight for himself through the leadership only god said okay fine paul you can escape so he escaped corinth now paul stays there for some time and then he decides that he will travel out and go to antioch so when he is going to antioch what does it mean home church yeah so then what does it mean yeah so if he goes back it's the close of his missionary journey isn't it so second missionary journey uh, he actually escapes from a tough place like corinth and he heads back to antioch so aquila and priscilla uh, in the second missionary journey he actually takes them to the two ephesus and leaves them there okay and uh, from there he carries on in his trip and we see the entrance of another individual here by the name of apollos okay so there's an introduction of uh, another teacher of the word this man called apollos and why apollos why is apollos important because he was an eloquent man and he was mighty in scriptures just like paul okay and uh, he came to ephesus so uh, just want to retrack and uh, clarify so i had uh, i had said corinth but no he brought them along to the next destination ephesus and he left them in ephesus okay aquila priscilla and apollos and he carries on with his journey so now when apollos is there who is also a teacher of the word we notice that aquila and priscilla they equip him further in god's word so let us read about apollos and then i will explain about him okay so from verse 24 we will read till verse 28 From twenty-four to when? Yeah, uh, twenty-four to twenty-eight of Acts. Excellent. Now, certain Acts Jews named mm. Apollos, born at Alexandria, and eloquent men and mighty in the Scriptures, comes to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he uh, he spoke the and taught. accurately the things of the lord though he knew only the baptism of john so he began to speak boldly in in the synagogues when aquila and priscilla heard him they took him aside and explained to him the way of god more accurately and when he desi- desired to cross to achaya the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples of receive him 
and when he arrived he grant, greatly helped those who had believed through grace for he vigorously refute, refuted that the Jews public, uh, publicly showing from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ okay thank you thank you for uh, reading about apollos now i'm going to show the map to us one more time just so that we are clear okay so i hope that you can all see the map now uh because paul stops by just once at Ephesus, right? Um, we don't see him doing any ministry in Ephesus. Okay, so that's why I got a little bit uh, confused there. But from here, if you notice, we are we are clear about Beria, then uh, you know Thessalonica, and then the journey he comes he comes to Athens, right? And then Corinth, he stays in Corinth one and a half years, a lot of opposition, uh, and from there he goes. To a place called Sankria. Okay, so Sankria, and from there, he actually makes a stop in Ephesus. So, you all can see it on the map? Yeah, okay. So, there he leaves behind um, Priscilla, Aquila, and they meet this man called Apollos. Okay, and then he travels out, he goes back to our usual place. He is coming down here. Let me pull the map up. Okay. Yeah. So from um, Ephesus, he's back, Caesarea, Jerusalem, and back to Antioch. And in the same passage, it also says that, you know, he, he uh, will start the third missionary journey. He will go back to the region of uh, uh, Galatia and start the third missionary journey. Okay. So once he reaches Antioch, there his second missionary journey has come to an end. So where did maximum ministry take place in the second missionary journey? Corinth. It took place in Corinth. So we are clear about that. No confusions, right? Okay, great. Fine. So now let us talk about Apollos. What does it say about Apollos? Apollos was born in Alexandria and uh, he was good with the scriptures. He was able to communicate eloquent and mighty in scriptures means he knows the scriptures. He's able to communicate the scriptures with accuracy. He too served uh, in Ephesus. Now in Ephesus, Aquila and Priscilla noticed something. What was that? Though Apollos was a good teacher of the word, he was missing some information. Okay, or he was not updated. So notice here, verse 25, it says, This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. So he is a believer, yes or no? He is. But is it possible for believers not to know some uh, like key doctrines? It may happen. They are genuine believer, good believer, but they have not heard. So why does it say baptism of John? Because Apollos was not aware of the baptism in the spirit. He only knew water baptism. He didn't know Holy Spirit baptism. So when Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they are more updated compared to Apollos. So think about this. You know, they could have judged Apollos or they could have said, what, you don't know this much also or you're wrong. They could have opposed him, but they didn't do that. How did they deal with Apollos? They took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. So as teachers of God's word, they are helping another teacher be more updated. Got it. So that's the way they helped one another in the kingdom of God so that the churches can thrive. So uh, he was updated so that he could preach the word more accurately. And uh, yes, 
So that's what we see here. And he continued to do the work of teaching and he refuted the Jews publicly, which means that, you know, like Paul, he was also giving answers to their questions and all and doing the ministry. So that is a little bit about Apollos. Okay, Apollos uh, is a very um, sought after teacher of the word, just like Paul. Okay, so we'll we'll talk about uh, um, Apollos in the course on Corinthians. I think you probably already done that. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move on then from Acts chapter eighteen. We'll go to the next one. So by now, yeah. 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 Hmm. Verse number. Hmm. Hmm. No, uh, maybe it's just the frustration that they, they expected Paul to be judged and uh, put behind bars, but Gallio did not. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, see, we don't have the complete, complete description. I'm sure that even the Greeks had their own issues. So they would have loved it if Paul was convicted, uh, but uh, Gallio did not take action. So yes, so both the communities seems like both the communities had an issue with him, and that's why they even the Greeks took uh, Sosthenes and they beat him up. Yeah, so they must have thought that you know, like sometimes when you make a big noise. It disrupts everything and uh, people will take action, but it didn't happen. Yeah, any any other? Okay, just that. Okay, fine. All right, so we'll come back here. And we will talk about Paul on his third missionary journey. Okay, so now... Apollos also went to Corinth and he had a powerful ministry there. Okay. So where did we where did we see the entry of Apollos? Yes. Ephesus, where um, Aquila and Priscilla are teaching him. But he also went to Corinth and he had his uh, time with the church of Corinth. So you know, we mustn't get confused. Uh, so sometimes, you know, that sound that's very overlapping. Uh, uh, for us, but Apollos was initially in Ephesus, but then he went, he did the ministry in Corinth. Now, while he was ministering in Corinth, Paul passed through the upper regions. Which are the upper regions? Think about the map, you'll get the answer. Mm, upper, upper regions. No, see, Paul has completed his missionary journey, right? And then he is moving around. So, which are the upper regions that way? He's not in. He's not in Achaia anymore. Okay, you want to see the map? Okay, I think that is better. So we will look at the uh, third missionary journey. This is the longest one. We have the map here. So it is AD 53. 
53 to AD 57, four years, Paul goes on his third missionary journey. You remember the, the hometown or the home base church, Antioch? From Antioch, he's moving in the upper regions. Upper regions is Gal Galatia. Understood? This is where we are. So Tarsus, Derby, Lystra, Iconium, the places where he went in the first missionary journey. Yeah. So this is, this is all the upper region. Straight away he comes to Ephesus. In the second missionary journey, did he stay in Ephesus? No, he didn't stay. Because you remember he was in Corinth, Sencria, quickly touched Ephesus, dropped Aquila, Priscilla over there. Then he went back, went back to Antioch. So now finally he is coming to Ephesus. And now there will be some powerful ministry which will be done in Ephesus. It's a very key place. Like in second missionary journey, Corinth is a place where he stayed long time. He will stay in Ephesus a long time now. Okay. So in fact, Ephesus is the place where he stays the most, uh, you know, the longest compared to any other city so far. So we will learn about Ephesus. Okay. Fine. And then, you know, he will uh, make a further journey just visiting the good old places. But we'll come back to that. Let's talk firstly about Ephesus. So he is right now in Ephesus. Okay. So he's come to Ephesus and uh, it says, and finding some disciples, he said to them. Obviously, he'll find some disciples because who was there before him? No, in Ephesus. Aquila, Priscilla, Apollos, they were all there. So there are believers in, in uh, Ephesus. So he finds some disciples and he asks a question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? What is this question? Does this question, is it accurate? Yes or no? How about the online yes. students? Yes, it is accurate. When we are born again, we receive the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> then why is Paul asking like this? He's asking about... Can you hear me? Anina, just one moment, Nina. Not able to hear you. Okay. Nina wants to say something. It's all on headphones. Nina, you want to try saying something? Uh, can you hear me now? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, just one second, Nina. Sorry, we're not able to hear. It's okay. Yeah, uh, can we can hear there? Okay, Nina, please go ahead. Uh, you're able to hear me? Not. Yes, we Shall can I hear go? you. Yeah, okay. Uh, this thing, yes, the question uh, receiving the Holy Spirit, probably he's referring to the baptism of the Holy Spirit because the other occasions which are mentioned when Peter spoke to Cornelius and all of that, it said that. While he spoke itself, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and, you know, manifested uh, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, the gift of tongues and all of that. Uh, is Are they referring to that? And I've also wanted a, a question. It's been, here they're kind of referring to John's baptism. Whereas whenever the believers, I mean, in Acts, that is, it mentions that they were baptized in Jesus' name. I mean, is there any difference? Uh, hmm. John's baptism is a baptism of repentance, they say, you know, and now uh, even the Great Commission talks about that you have to be baptized in the name of the Father. So is there any difference there? I just wanted to check. And here probably hmm. they're referring to uh, whether they, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Is, it, is that what he's talking yes. about? Uh, yeah, correct, Nina. So uh, two things that you shared. Uh, firstly, you mentioned that uh, when Paul asks this question in Acts 19, he's 
talking to the believers now we know that being born again is a work of the spirit because in john 3 that's what jesus said you know the the uh, the wind we don't know where it comes from where it goes so what was he talking about he was talking about the work of the spirit and unless you are born again you cannot enter the kingdom of god because it's a work of god by his holy spirit so when anyone is born again they are born again through the work of the holy spirit and the regeneration of the spirit the book of titus says okay now uh, and we receive the holy spirit as soon as we are born again we have the holy spirit coming and dwelling in us so when paul says did you receive the holy spirit it helps us recognize that there are two separate experiences of receiving the holy spirit one is born again experience where obviously if they are disciples answer is yes how can they be disciples without the holy spirit they are born again by the holy spirit answer is yes but he is talking about the second distinct experience of holy spirit baptism so that's what he's asking them were you baptized in the holy spirit that's the more specific question that he's asking which is what nina was also sharing so that's correct okay now nina coming back to your question john's baptism so john's baptism is generally understood as baptism in water yes it's the baptism of repentance and uh, you know we have instructions in the great commission you know baptism in the name of jesus and all that but in simple terms whenever we say john's baptism it's baptism in water yeah so then there is another baptism right that we must talk about which is baptism in the holy spirit that comes up so that's the understanding i hope that helps yes thank you uh, yeah so so i'm assuming nina said okay we couldn't hear you uh, she saying yes yeah thank you nina that's fine all right so he is asking them have you uh, received the holy spirit when you believed and the answer of the disciples is we have not so much as heard whether there is a holy spirit so they have not heard about this other experience of being baptized in the holy spirit and verse 3 and he said to them into what then were you baptized and they say into john's baptism which simply means water baptism okay then paul goes ahead and he ministers to them the baptism of the holy spirit so that's that's what we read in the uh, 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 verses that follow so in verse 6 paul laid hands on them and the holy spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied so they receive the uh, experience of being baptized in the holy spirit now what are the ministry does paul have in ephesus let's read on here he comes to the synagogue that's his common place where he goes and talks about jesus so he goes there uh, but some of them were not very open to it so in verse 9 it says some were hardened and did not believe but spoke evil of the way before the multitude so then he goes out of that place and he goes to a place called as the school of tyrannus and in this place he teaches god's word for 2 years so all who dwelt in asia heard the word of the lord jesus both jews and greeks so let me quickly show us the map once more to make things clear okay so we said that in the third missionary journey he comes to ephesus firstly he talks about baptism in the holy spirit and then goes to the synagogue ministers there but people don't receive his word so where does he go he goes to the school of tyrannus he goes to the school and in that 
place he does the ministry so we can we know he is a teacher of god's word so, so for 2 years he was teaching god's word in a school school means um it uh, you know it it must have had the facilities where people come and listen to somebody teaching so that kind of a setting he goes there he teaches for two words and people from where came asia so when we consider the map you know, right we are talking about a map which was 2000 years ago so don't get confused asia in those days this region was known as asia okay and we know that you know asia minor uh, turkey and all are part of asia minor right so the map also has had many changes so by looking at this don't get confused that why is the asia here and when it says people from asia came people in the surrounding regions they came that's how we have to look at it okay so uh, the current the present map is very different so uh, like when when we talk about uh, you know syria and this region you get you have the uh, nation of turkey so all these seven churches that we talk about in the book of revelation they come within you know that space where uh, turkey is today so the present map is very different uh, in ephesus people from asia came means the surrounding region they all it was easy for them to come isn't it because it's by land so they can all come and they can learn from paul so he ministered in the school of tyrannus for 2 years so it is somewhat like um, bible college <laughs> if you want to take it that way because 2 uh, years paul is there and what's happening people are coming from everywhere and they are learning and paul is equipping them equipping them teaching them so it's a very powerful work which god is doing through paul now did paul ever want to go to asia did he try yes yes right in the second missionary journey he had a desire he wanted to go but holy spirit said no you go to macedonia so it's something different like why is holy spirit leading him like this the leading of the holy spirit uh we don't understand but a lot of work which was done in asia it was not done by paul like physically going into asia because we see that he never really went there you know to all the places in asia but the people who came to the school of tyrannus were the people who went back and made an impact in asia so that's how god worked uh, in the region of asia of course god used paul but not physically him going into those places so even today when um, there is an opportunity to equip leaders ministers of god we equip them and what is the expectation they go back to their places and they make a huge difference a powerful difference the way paul taught in the school of tyrannus okay so uh, this is a little bit about his ministry in ephesus now there is more there is more we will read about supernatural ministry that takes place through the life of paul verse 11 it says god worked unusual miracles by the hands of paul why is it called unusual reason is even his handkerchief or apron when it was brought to people who are sick diseases left them and evil spirits went out of them so what do we have to say about this about uh, handkerchiefs bringing healing and uh, deliverance hmm anointing that's right yeah So that's our understanding. Why did the handkerchief, um, you know, why did it? Uh, how how do I put it? Uh, how did it carry the power? Basically, the anointing of God. 
um we can't box god up and god has his own ways of ministering to people so in this case we see that even through material object the anointing was uh, moving and working so handkerchief of paul means handkerchief and apron what is uh, why did he have handkerchief why did he have aprons exactly so he was a tent maker and you know in the heat in the middle east and sun they wear the apron and handkerchief to wipe their sweat so it's not like he had some fancy handkerchiefs these are his usual items that he used for his uh, work and uh, can you imagine like normal things of paul they are just nothing but his clothes and his handkerchief that also carried god's power and uh, people were able to be healed okay spirits left evil spirits left and people were healed now one more question uh, in this case there is a material object like handkerchief okay which is which has carries the anointing and actually it's about the anointing it's not about the handkerchief isn't it can god work without material object yes, yes? how do we say that correct so peter's shadow is a non material object and that is also unusual miracles that people when they came under the shadow of peter they were healed so god can work in all these ways so my other question uh now because god is working through material objects okay like if we go to the book of james james chapter 5 it says uh, if anyone is sick among you let them call for the elders and take oil anoint with oil oil handkerchief um are these objects special no okay so yeah that's the answer so it's not about the object we should not make the object a uh, very um, what do you call like a uh, honored or a revered thing right uh, yes god work through these items so that gives us understanding that if there are some material objects for example we are not able to go and visit someone and pray for them they live very far away so then maybe i prayed over a cloth and i send the cloth i can believe god that yeah there is healing that will flow through it um or let's say you know somebody is sick and we do this right we pray for over the water the food we release the anointing and we say okay you eat it and god's power will be seen in it so we can uh, apply it we can use this truth but we should not make the objects something special because uh, what is the extreme of this people end up abusing this truth like you know sometimes there is merchandise of uh, products Uh, where people say okay you have to buy this oil it's very expensive and we are thinking it's anointed oil and we are ready to pay the money and buy it all that is not uh, how the early church worked so we must be careful not to stretch it to the extreme but what is the truth yes anointing can be there in material objects and it can bring healing it can bring deliverance okay so that's what we must remember now moving on another supernatural um, thing that happens is through paul there are demons that are cast out so there are um, people known as exorcists jewish exorcists they used to cast out demons okay um now obviously we know that without jesus the name of jesus the deliverance is not real because demons will be subject to the authority of christ so paul was casting out demons in the name of jesus so when certain exorcists they saw what was going on they thought it is some trick or some uh, um you know like what can you say some principle we can use that principle and cast demons so there were seven sons of skiva 
a jewish chief priest what they decided is they will also cast out the demons in the name of jesus so they go and they try to use that step they say in the name of jesus come out and what happens to them you know there is uh, uh, like the spirits they say that jesus we know and paul we know who are you and something terrible happens the evil spirit Uh, leaps on them overpowers them and uh, you know they are they are uh, um, beaten up and you know they they fled out of the house naked and wounded it says so uh, they got beaten up by the spirits so what what went wrong in this situation you can't just take the name of jesus okay so, yeah more than that uh, you know the spirit say jesus we know paul we know who are you so the way we understand this is they were not believers because the authority of the name of jesus works for the believer isn't it yeah maybe most of the people they don't right right so they are correct i know so there's no faith they don't belong to the kingdom and they thought it's like a trick just uh, we see paul is using the name of jesus we'll also use and they try it and they got beaten up okay so this is the important thing that when we are authority is given to the children of god so because we are the children of god we have the authority of the name of jesus and we can command demons whereas it will not work if we are not children of god yeah so and notice one more thing the kingdom of darkness recognizes people of the kingdom of light jesus we know paul we know so francis we know <laughs> right okay nancy we know Every, meaning if you are in the kingdom of god okay sorry everyone <laughs> yeah I, i just meant to say that uh we are in the kingdom of jesus and even the powers of darkness know every child of god okay so that's amazing that's amazing uh we they they know what we carry and that must give us a lot of confidence when we are serving in the ministry of deliverance okay so really powerful so we will see that now that uh, uh deliverance is taking place in the city of ephesus something amazing is going to happen okay uh, like let me just give a, a a small introduction here and then stop so we'll see that many started believing in jesus okay to the point where there are people who are practicing black magic who went and burnt all their things and you know they did not follow the the uh, uh, the gods of the land they devoted themselves to jesus so there was a powerful transformation in the city of ephesus so we will talk about the city of ephesus we will talk about the powerful transformation that took place in ephesus in the next class and because of this transformation again there is great opposition to paul wherever he goes you remember what did they say uh, in um, where, where was this thessalonica yeah they said these are the people who have turned the world upside down so that turning the world upside down is happening in every city this paul's presence in ephesus and ministry it will impact the whole city so we will talk more about it in the next class so for now we just uh, read about a couple of things that happened through him so let's pray and we are going to close uh, i want to request someone from Uh, on campus batch to lead in prayer ah uh, heavenly father lord uh, we thank you for this time of teaching oh lord father jesus thank you for 
teaching us a lot father and lord uh, whatever we have learned a lot father help us a lot father to steward it well a lot father and holy spirit god help us a lot father to remember the authority that you have given us a lot father and help us to walk in the authority that you have given us a lot father god we give you all the glory and honor in jesus name we pray amen 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 amen, amen. thank you